Two weeks into the rally, we were making our way across Turkey, starting to see the landscape change dramatically. One of our favourite games to play on the road is rally car or just really crap car, because uh, there's a few times we've seen like a Fiat Panda or a Nissan Micra um, or like a Corsa in front of us, and especially if they have a roof rack or stickers on it or lots of dodgy paint on it, we're instantly like, oh, a rally car, and then we get a little bit closer and just realise it's just a crap local car. <laughs> <laughs> but that one, we were almost certain it was. Yeah. Oh, it's hot in here, isn't it? It's hot in here. We decided to stop at Tuzgalu, which literally translates as Salt Lake, one of the world's biggest hypersaline lakes, for a look around. This is very cool. We are at Tuzgalu, which is almost definitely not how you pronounce it. Um, it's a hypersaline salt lake, one of the largest in the world, and it just kind of simmers off into the distance and you can't see anything. Um, I feel like we're in the Bolivian salt flats. It's very cool. I was just walking and I'm wearing flip-flops and this salt lake just is like turns into slush <laughs> and my feet I just my flip-flops just got absolutely like suckered in by the um, sludge and they just popped off my feet and I could got them stuck in the mud and it's like a thousand degrees on your feet it's so hot so I'm just like screaming and jumping up and down and trying to release my shoes from this salt Pit of fire. Oh, it hurt, it burned, it burned. Oh, and my little flip flops that got stuck. Ugh. You can see how people die quick in the desert. We've been out here like 10 minutes, but there's so much light reflection and glare everywhere. I'm just sweating, I can't handle it. On the way to Cappadocia, we stopped at a petrol station and ran into another rally team. I volunteered Rebecca to have a little belly dance off for the local. He <laughs> 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 got this! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> we just arrived in Cappadocia and I love it already. It's like it's like an ancient Mesopotamian civilization or something and all the buildings are inside caves. I thought it would be a hard job trying to get somewhere to stay in a cave hotel, but that's just how they do it here in Cappadocia, apparently. You won't see it on the six o'clock news. Slow waiting in the mail, trust you. Look at this place. It's incredible. I am just so... I'm like beaming in one of those magical moods where you're like, oh my god, I can't believe this is real, I'm seeing it with my own eyes. It's so cool. I'm so excited to go out and explore and see the stars tonight from the rooftop and then the balloons tomorrow morning. I'm so excited. Oh wow. It's nice and cool as well. Yeah, it is. What's behind the door? Oh! oh my god! Put it back, put it back! Jono purely exists to like fix my mishaps. Story of my life. <laughs> 
Cappadocia is famous for its sunrise hot air balloon rides over the ancient cave city in the desert. Well, that's good. I think, <laughs> I think that's a bull, bull rider dude. No, it's Turkish. Look, this is what that man was doing earlier. He wasn't dancing with his tail. Maybe if he had a towel, he would have been. <laughs> what time is it, Johnny? Too fucking early. <laughs> Five o'clock in the morning. We're about to watch the hot air balloons fly. Do you know what I mean? It sounds like it's not real, but... This is unreal. This is unreal. This is like the most surreal thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's amazing. Looking up yeah. and just seeing this sky full of balloons, it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> This morning has been so special, but Jono and I were just saying, even without the balloons, this place is so unique and so, just like nothing else I've ever seen before. You really don't even need the balloons. You could just come here and just wander around this maze of buildings and caves. It's really incredible. We decided to do some exploring around Cappadocia, starting with an underground city. very hot. Very, very hot. Yeah, we're about to go to the underground city. There's two underground cities just outside of Cappadocia. Um, and we're going to the deepest one. We're going to the underground city two, the sequel, baby. So, Eight stories deep. I think it's 40 meters. 40 meters, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, we're really excited to see that and see what that's like. Um, and then we're back to our slumming it old ways of staying in the swag in a dusty campground tonight. So yeah, we had a nice like a really nice night in a really luxurious hotel. Yeah. And blew our budget in one day, so. Yeah, our weekly budget. Back to sleeping on the ground. Yep. <laughs> You're an animal, I love it. Chew, chew, chew. <laughs> I guess people would have been really small back in the day. Yeah. So we just had a little bit of information on this underground city. It's eight stories deep, 55 meters, and 10,000 people used to live down here. But I can see why it's like so much cooler down here than it is on the surface. And people were trying to kill them on the surface. Oh. <laughs> they, they, to do with it. Yeah, they lived down here for a few months at a time while they were hiding, pretty much. 
Oh, I thought this was just a cool dig, like no. a hipster, like, yeah, I live in the underground cave. I'm gangster. <laughs> The stone door, so they rolled that across here, and no one could get through. The baddies couldn't get them. Just like in Indiana Jones. Exactly. This is a bit narrow and steep, actually. I just scared those Asians by making ghost noises. <laughs> Stop. Oh. this historical cave visit to like a house of horrors he's starting going ooh at some little kids ooh. just like that <laughs> and they're like screaming I've got all and, the locals into it too yeah and now all the locals are into it and this Turkish guy just jumped out at me <laughs> literally <laughs> made me crap my pants I'm like a Buddhism <laughs> it was really scary oh I can't concentrate on these stairs you know oh, the bottom of the Ooh. Down this way. It's very small. Oh, oh, yes. I just gave that girl a fright because I thought she was you. Oh. <laughs> well, that serves you right then, doesn't it? We're both really hot. It's um, very cramped in here. It's really close air. So we're going to keep moving towards the exit. John, I just said this is what I do when I'm driving. <coughs> reason when it's 36 degrees outside we decided to go for a steep walk into the Ilara Valley which is beautiful but it's very hot and we just got to the stairs and realized that if we go down we're gonna have to come back up 100 meters 100 meters <laughs> So David Attenborough, what, what have you got? We just saw a um, little lizard and its defense mechanism is to drop its tail which wiggles around. So the bird will go for the tail, it sacrifices its tail and then it will grow back another one. So Jono just scared the life out of this lizard. And its tail literally just dropped off. So fast. But it's a beautiful, like, iridescent blue colour. And it's still kind of wiggling around. Oh, whoa. Um, so we've made our final food pit stop of the day. Um, and John is pretty happy because he is a um, lover of any kind of body of water, whether it's a lake or the sea or a puddle, he'll take what he can get. And we're pretty much having coffee and a Turkish pancake sat in the water on a log. So this is his ideal dining situation. He is not just on the water, he's in the water. Thank you. This is pretty high stakes dining. We just saw a child fall into the water. Someone else dropped their entire handbag. I'm probably about to drop my phone in. So um, It's a really nice spot, but if you're clumsy, probably not the place you want to be having your dinner. Now the only thing left was to head back up to the car. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this episode, we'd love to see you like, share and subscribe. Check out our fundraising page linked in the bio below and donate. We'll be hitting you with another episode very soon.